I've done all of this raster effects work in draw without leaving the application. And the powerful part is going to be when I bring this back into a monochrome bitmap, and then I've got spot color properties associated with my raster object. So it's just like working with vector, but yet it's raster, and you get the nice hand-drawn artistic distress grunge looks that are very popular in the market very easily with all of these effects that we have available directly in Corel Draw. Now once that's finished processing we can see that we now have a pencil or a hand-drawn look with this graphic. Now I want to do some things to get rid of some of this gray make this look more like a black which you can see we've got a very pencil look here but I want to really dial this effect in now as opposed to just having this really rough edge. I want to bring this in a bit and dial this pencil look in or this artistic look in and then darken it up a little bit so I'm going to get a nice dark print when I go ahead to do my color separations for screen printing. So the first thing I'm going to do I don't want to keep working at 600 dpi that's really pretty high resolution for a graphic this size. So I'm first going to do is I'm just going to go to bitmaps resample and I'm going to bring my resolution back down to 300 and select OK and we'll bring our resolution back down then the next thing I want to do is I want to address some of that destruction I made. Now you do that very easily. I'm going to go to Effects, Adjust, and I'm going to go to Tone Curve. Another raster functionality that we have directly from PhotoPaint available in Draw. And I want to left click up here in the top and we'll go ahead and zoom in and see what happens here. We'll see how we bring some of this effect back and kind of dial in our pencil strokes or our lines in our graphic. We'll left click up here in the right hand corner just pull to to the, to the left and down here in the left we'll left click and pull down to the right and I'll click on preview and you can see starting to darken this up again and I'm losing some of this data that's off the edge and really these are dots I'm not going to hold anyway in a grayscale when I'm screen printing so I don't want them there anyway because I want to be aware of what's going on with my tonal ranges in grayscale click preview again and I've gone too dark there so I want to go ahead and bring this back this way, preview, see what we get here, and then we'll go ahead and bring this over, bring this over this way, preview, and you can see now I'm getting a really nice pencil look here. I've got a lot of would look like the graniation of a pencil line or a pencil drawing. Go ahead and select OK here and process that, and then once that effect is set in, the next thing I want to do is you can see now I'm starting to get a really nice artistic look here. It looks like somebody painted or drew these in. We've really broken up this vector quite a bit. The next thing that I want to do, I actually probably want to run that one more time, dial in a little bit. Let's see how, how we're doing down here with our detail. This is okay, but I probably want to do that one more time, darken it up just a little bit more to hold that detail. So I'll actually go to Effects, and I'll go to Adjust, and we'll go to Tone Curve again. I'm going to bring this up and click Preview and lighten this up just a little bit more than what we've already got and see if we can bring some of this back also and I'll bring this down here preview OK and you can see we'll bring some of this back OK it will be even darker and just a little bit tighter because we're trying to hold while we're converting we're trying to hold what's going on here without losing it we want this to have a nice look, look like somebody drew it very lightly with a pencil or an artistic look now this looks kind of rough at the moment we're going to deal with this in just a minute now now that I've gotten to this, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm simply going to go to Bitmaps, Mode, Black and White. And I'm going to go with, let me see, I don't want to go with Line Art. If I do a preview on Line Art, I could hold that as Line Art. But I don't know how well I'm going to hold that as Line Art. I might want to go with a different look here. And let's take a look at what we get here. Preview, Line Art. And actually, you know what? Line Art will work. It's going to hold the black and the white here okay now there's a lot of tricks to working with monochrome and we'll get into some things with the fashion factory applying our textures but there's a lot of intricacies involved in working with this and I'll try to explain it as best I can right here because we're going to convert this to a monochrome and when you convert to a monochrome what you want to be aware of is that you can hold levels of transparency or grayscale transparency in monochromes now there's a whole tutorial series on the site about modern t-shirt design with Corel Draw goes into all this stuff explains everything but um, I'm going to go ahead and go with this right here. Now there's a couple of different ways I can do this. I can also do this as, say, a Stuky. And you can see I'm going to get a different dot pattern here. And actually probably will go with Stuky because I like a stippled look. Or Sternberg, and once again I get a different dot pattern here. And I'll go with Sternberg because I like to bring this back from a stippled effect. Now I've got a black and white monochrome bitmap on layer 1. 
I'm going to create an ob a vector object and send that to the back of the page so you can see what we'll be dealing with here. And we'll go to the back of the page and we'll turn that to a red. Now right now there's white in my monochrome object. And my monochrome objects are reversed from vector. I actually left click for the background color and right click for the foreground color. And I just inverted that. Now I'll hit Control Z and go back. So if I want to knock out my background color on a vector object, you left click for your fill and right click for your outline, as you can see there. But on a monochrome, you left click to knock out your background and right click to change your foreground color. You just reverse what you're doing with vector. A little tricky, but once you get working with it, you get used to it. Even myself, I get confused. I start left clicking and right clicking. But just remember, it's reversed from vector. That your left click is your background color and your right click is your foreground color. And that works best for me. So go ahead, but this is a black and transparent left click in the X, get rid of the background. Then we simply take this object and we go to bitmaps, convert to bitmap now. We've got to have that transparent background turned on. Because if we don't, we're going to get a white background. We try to convert to our, gray, our monochrome. We're not going to hold the grayscales or the slight touches of color variation or tone variation in our effects that we start to create working with our monochromes. Now, I like to work with my effects typically as a grayscale because I know I'm going to monochrome and I get a good representation of what's going on there. But then when I go for my final monochrome conversions and my final effects, I like to be as a grayscale with a transparent background because when I convert to a monochrome, I'm not going to end up being stuck with just black and white. I'm going to hold the grayscales in my transparency. And as I said, there's a tutorials on the site that explain all this. Select OK and let that process. The next step for me is bitmaps, blur, Gaussian blur. And we're going to add just two pixels. I want to preview this first. So we're getting a nice, soft, artistic effect. And you can see that right there. And I want to take a look at this at one pixel also, just to see because I'm working at 300 dpi. And all I want to do is soften this up so it looks just a little bit artistic. And there we go. That's fine. You can see the difference. Now, this is a black and white grayscale that doesn't really have a mask associated with it but now we're going to have a mask on here that's like an 8-bit mask and that's pretty technical but you'll see the difference and I'll select OK. Now I've got this monochrome bitmap with a transparent background that's got a very soft hand on it. But what I can see what I've done here is what I wanted to do is I really want to bring my tonal ranges up. I'm not happy with the darkness here. I want this to be a little bit darker so I'm going to hit Control Z and go back to my grayscale and make some changes. And here we'll undo this till I get back to a grayscale bitmap. And is this with the transparent background? At this point, I think it was already. Yes, I think we've already got a trans. I'm going to send this to the back just so I can verify. Yes, we've got a transparent background. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to try and do a tone curve on this. Effects and adjust. And I'm going to go to tone curve. I'm going to open that up and I'm going to try and darken this just a bit. Preview. And that's not going to work. So what I want to do, actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to a bitmap with a um, solid background. Then I'll go back to a monochrome. I'll go to bitmap, convert to bitmap, and I don't want a transparent background. Select OK. And I'm going to do my blur a little bit differently. I'm going to go to bitmap. I'm going to go to blur. I'm going to go to Gaussian blur. Because I'm going to want this to be a little bit darker. I'm going to apply this blur. Select OK. And then I'm going to bring my tone curve up.